Hi friends, it's time for another Sunday School with Miss Vicki. Why don't you grab your Bible? We are going to be in the book of Numbers today, chapter 22, verses 21 to 38. So if you thought our last lesson about the bronze snake was kind of weird, wait until you hear today's story because I think this is the weirdest story in the Bible. So the Israelites are walking in the desert. Remember, they're there for 40 years because God's punishing them because they were disobedient. And as they're walking through the desert, they encounter other people who don't want to be Israelites' friends. And so that's where our story is going to take place. There's a tribe called the Moabite people, and they don't like God's people at all. The king of the Moabites wants to put a curse on God's people. So he goes and finds a sorcerer. The sorcerer's name is Balaam. And um, he sends some people to Balaam, and they say, look, the king would really like it if you would put a curse on God's people. And Balaam says, hmm, let me think about that. And they say, hey, we'll pay you. And he says, well, I'll think about it. But in his heart, he kind of wanted to do it. Well, somehow Balaam is also talking to God, and I don't really know how that works, but God tells him, mm -mm, you don't get to mess with my people. And Balaam's like, well, they're going to pay me to do it. So that's where our story starts today. So Numbers chapter 22, verse 21. So the next morning, Balaam got up, saddled his donkey, and started off with the Moabite officials. So I have Balaam, and I have his donkey. We're going to just have to use our imagination for the Moabite officials. Uh, but God was angry that Balaam was going, so he sent an angel of the Lord to stand in the road to block his way. There we go. As Balaam and two servants were riding along, Balaam's donkey saw the angel of the Lord standing in the road with a sword drawn in his hand. Look at that sword. There we go. The donkey bolted off the road into a field, but Balaam beat it and turned it back onto the road. Then the angel of the Lord stood at a place where the road narrowed between two vineyard walls. When the donkey saw the angel of the Lord, it tried to squeeze by and crushed Balaam's foot against the wall. Uh-oh. What do you think Balaam's going to do? So Balaam beat the donkey again. Then the angel of the Lord moved further down the road and stood in a place too narrow for the donkey to get by at all. This time, when the donkey saw the angel, it lay down under Balaam. Is Balaam going to like that? In a fit of rage, Balaam beat the donkey again with his staff. Boys and girls, you know that's not right. The first time, or the second time, or the third time. What do you think is going to happen next? Then the Lord gave the donkey the ability to speak. What? I gotta read that again. Then the Lord gave the donkey the ability to, the ability to speak. And here's what the donkey says. What have I done to you that deserves your beating me three times? It asked Balaam. Okay, if your dog or cat or donkey or horse or hamster or guinea pig or fish or turtle or rabbit or whatever your pet is starts talking to you, what are you going to do? Uh, I'm going to scream and run away and be completely freaked out. Let's see what Balaam does. Balaam replies to the donkey, You have made me look like a fool, Balaam shouted. If I had a sword with me, I would kill you. But I, am I the same donkey you have ridden all your life, the donkey answered. Have I ever done anything like this before? No, Balaam admitted. Balaam's having this conversation with his donkey. Okay. Verse 31 says, Then the Lord opened Balaam's eyes, and he saw the angel of the Lord standing in the roadway with a drawn sword in his hand. Balaam bowed his head and fell face down on the ground before him. Why did you beat your donkey those three times? The angel of the Lord demanded. Look, I have come to block your way because you are stubbornly resisting me. Three times the donkey saw me and shied away. Otherwise, I certainly would have killed you by now and spared the donkey. So the angel 
was ready to kill Balaam, but the donkey actually saved his life. Then Balaam confessed to the angel of the Lord, I have sinned. I didn't realize you were standing in the road to block my way. I will return home if you are against my going. Wait, where is he going? He's going to the Moabite king to put a curse on the Israelites, right? But the angel of the Lord told Balaam, go with these men, but say only what I tell you to say. So Balaam went on with the king's officials. When the king heard that Balaam was on his way, he sent he went out to meet him at a Moabite town on the Arnon River at the farthest border of his land. Didn't I send you an urgent invitation? Why didn't you come right away? King Balak asked Balaam. Didn't you believe me when I said I would reward you richly? That means he'd get lots of money. Balaam replied, look, now I have come, but I have no power to say whatever I want. I will speak only the message that God puts in my mouth. Well, in the next chapter, we learn that Balaam actually gives a blessing to God's people. Did I tell you this was a weird story? A talking donkey? That is crazy. God used this donkey, this talking donkey, to get Balaam's attention. But we don't need a talking donkey for us to listen to God. We don't need a talking donkey to help us know what's the right thing to do, do we? The Bible tells us that everyone who has a relationship with Jesus also has the Holy Spirit living inside of them. And if we look at the book of John, chapter 16, verse 13, Jesus said these words. He said, when the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. We talked about the Holy Spirit coming at Pentecost, remember? The uh, tongues of fire came down, and Peter gave the best sermon of his entire life in, in Jerusalem, and people were speaking in different languages. That's, that's the Holy Spirit. When the Spirit of Truth, that's another name for the Holy Spirit, comes, he will guide you into all truth. Right? The Holy Spirit helps us know what's right, helps us know what's wrong, gives us a nudge when we need a nudge gives us a, a, hey, you shouldn't do that, right? When we shouldn't be doing those things. We don't need a donkey, thankfully. I think that would freak me out. <laughs> How about you? We have the Holy Spirit to help guide us and to help show us the way. Boys and girls, I hope you remember that God loves you, that God made you, and he has an awesome plan for your life. See you next time.